Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world. The light no darkness can overcome. Stand this now, for it is evening, and the day is almost over. Let your light scatter the darkness and shine.
May our prayers come before you, O God, as incense, and may your presence surround and fill us, so that in union with all creation, we may sing your praise and your love in our lives. Amen. Hello, and welcome back to the last installment of the Wednesday Holden Prayer Services. We are so glad you could be here with us through Lent. And during Lent, we've been looking in the book of Proverbs, connecting them with what we've been here on Sundays and throughout to connect the book of Proverbs with the teaching of the New Testament with our lives today. And we continue. Our reading today comes from Proverbs chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. The Proverbs of Solomon, son of David, king of Israel, for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight, for receiving instruction in prudent behavior, doing what is right and just and fair. For giving prudence to those who are simple, knowledge and discretion to the young. Let the wise listen and add to their learning, and let the discerning get guidance. For understanding proverbs and parables, the sayings and riddles of the wise. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. This, what we just heard, is the beginning to the book of Proverbs. The introduction, the very first snippet of the whole book. I think it does a great job because it introduces major themes throughout this book. God's wisdom, fools, those who want to be great in the eyes of God, those who want to just be good people. There's also a couple of short sayings here, like verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. That phrase is used several more times, twice in the book of Proverbs and once again in the book of Psalms. That phrase comes up and up again. I think it was done on purpose. I think the writer of Proverbs wanted to keep it as the theme for the whole book of Proverbs. Now, right from the get-go, some people might get hung up on the word fear. Now, this word fear is not like how we might think of it today. And because that's kind of a poor English translation, the word fear has kind of changed in our culture. It used to be reverent, which was showing deep and solemn respect. But now the word fear is associated with phobias, an abnormal or unhealthy fear that completely cripples people. That's not what this is about. We are not scared of an angry God. If you think about it, that was actually the issue for Martin Luther way back in the Middle Ages, the start of the Lutheran Church. That was the main driving force that drove Luther was that he was so afraid of pleasing an angry God that he would go to great lengths to try to do what was right spending hours and hours in confession, doing penance after penitent work, and all the while thinking he could not live up or please an angry God because his fear was so gripping. That's not what this passage is about. Again, this fear is more like the word reverent, showing a deep and solemn respect. Now, some people, even today, we know that God loves us, but some of us still struggle with this because we have this issue with fear of God that we're not worthy. But please know that God loves you and God cares deeply for you. God is mighty and powerful, so we are in deep and solemn respect. But God is not an angry judge waiting to strike at us. No. This book of Proverbs shows the opposite. This is an open invitation. God says, come, learn, grow. This wisdom is not school learning or street smarts. It's actually about God's way in following God following after the themes that God has for us, the wisdom, the insight, the wisdom and inspiration. This is what the whole book of Proverbs is about. The whole book of Proverbs is about this wisdom. How do we gain it? Where do we find the wisdom? Who do we listen to? How do we put it into our real life application every day? We heard last week it's that utilitarianism of philosophy. Why Proverbs? Why does Proverbs write so much about this. Well, it's going to sound kind of silly, but it is wisdom literature after all. Wisdom is the heart of this book. Wisdom is what drives this book. We want to be wise, not fools. So what do we make of that fools? Because we don't oftentimes use that language in our culture, but when we do, we think of someone who lacks mental capacity or mental functioning. I actually first think about Mr. T. I pity the fool. Now, for Mr. T, that fool is someone who doesn't do what's right or who messes with Mr. T. But the fool in our culture is someone who can't have the capacity to learn or be intelligent. But that's not what the Bible is about. 
from the Bible, especially in the book of Proverbs, the fool is very different. The fool in the Bible is someone who thinks they know best and does whatever they want to do instead of following after God. Now, we know what happens when we do this. When we think we know best or we want to do what we want to do, we justify our sins. And so we go headlong into something we shouldn't. We dive headfirst into sin, not thinking twice about it. Because we think, well, I deserve this, or I can, or I'm good enough for this, or hey, this is the right thing to do. All these actions are throughout the book we talk about this, in the book of Proverbs. They describe what fools do. They go after their own lust, their own gluttony, their own sinfulness, their own desires. Instead of saying, what does God want? The fool never wants to stop to think about God. All they think about is themselves. And so this first chapter presents a question that lingers throughout the book of Proverbs. Which do we want to be? Do we want to be wise? Or do we want to be foolish? That's the question spread throughout. The choice is open. God is open saying, hey, here it is. Take it. If you want wisdom, here it is. Given for you. If you want your own pleasure, your own desires, then you can easily follow after that too. But it will lead to destruction heartache, pain for those who you care about and those who you love. The choice is there. I think the choice is simple. But the book of Proverbs lays out a very clear argument. The challenge is, do we actually listen and accept that question and choose God? Amen.
Great and merciful God, source and ground of all goodness and life, give to your people the peace that passes all understanding and the will to live your gospel of mercy and justice. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless our God.